Hello there, algebra students and math wonders. Uh, we're going to continue with some of our lectures here on roots and radicals. Um, and today what we're going to do is we're going to look at simplifying radicals, roots, and uh, making use of some of the properties to break uh, large roots down into easier to work with uh, values. So uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, looking at our main goal. And our goal is to simplify slash evaluate roots of any different type of index, uh, square roots, cube roots, fourth roots. So we want to simplify, evaluate, about, evaluate roots as much as possible. And the idea being breaking it down so that we can work with it and apply other rules like adding and subtracting them, um, etc. So anyways, uh, a lot of these roots come with many different indices and uh, what we're familiar with is how to do perfect roots. So far, we know how to evaluate roots that are perfect squares, are perfect squares, but not just squares, if we're looking at uh, the third root, we're looking at perfect cubes, etc. such as We know how to take the square root of 1. What number multiplied by itself uh, two times give you 1? That's just 1. We know how to do the square root of 4, which is not 4, but 2. Okay, we know how to do the square root of 9. I'll kind of advance this a little bit. We know how to do the square root of x squared. So what number multiplied by itself twice gives you x squared? That's just x. And we know how to take the cube root of a number like 8. What number multiplied by itself 3 times gives you 8? That is just 2. And onward. We know how to take the cube root of y cubed, which is y. And dot, dot, dot. So we know how to work with perfect squares, perfect cubes, perfect fourth roots when this is a 4, etc. So now, the challenge is to break down a root, which is just a number approximation, if possible. Such as, let's say we have the square root of 8. Okay, so the square root of 8 is not a perfect square. What multiplied by itself twice will give you 8? Well, that doesn't exist. So, how do we do that? And that is the main question. Now, first off, let's give me one little second while I get my handy calculator. Uh, first, what we want to note before we move on is that this is a certain value. We know that the square root of 4 gives you 2. Well, what's the square root of 8? Well, it's going to be some sort of decimal number. So what we want to note is that all these roots that are not perfect roots, uh, we could break, we could approximate with our calculator. Just take the, uh, you could press the 8 button and then you could take the square root, or if you have a graphing calculator like me, or so let's see, the square root of 8 yields about 
0.83. Uh, some other calculators, you could directly put the square root button in there, say 8, or note that this is the same thing as, I mean, now, uh, 8, yes, this is the same thing as 8 to the 1 half power. Okay, and you could put this in using the exponent form. So dot, dot, dot. Okay, so how do we break down somewhat the square root of 8? Well, the number one trick is to use properties. Okay, so to do this, we're going to apply two big properties, and I might have previewed these a little in the last lecture on just roots and radicals. All right, I need a little robot whiteboard cleaner to help here. <laughs> okay, to do this task, we apply the properties, these properties of radicals. Okay, so number one, this property is if you have the nth root of two real numbers, a times b, this is the same thing as separating these two quantities in multiplication form. Multiplication is nice because we can separate the roots and work with individual components of this radicand and simplify it. So this is the same thing as saying the nth root of a times the nth root of b. And if you think about it, uh, what you want to note by using our properties of rational exponents, that the nth root of a, b, I'll say since, that's a better term here, since the nth root of a, b is equivalent to a, b to the one all to the first power underneath here. Here's the first power, here's the first power. And using our rules for rational exponents, as far as converting radicals to rational exponents, we'll say this is to the one over n power. And this is the same thing as saying a to the one over n times b to the one over n, which is basically the nth root of a, times the nth root of b. Okay. So there is an important property we're going to use and utilize. We'll put actual numbers in there so it might make a little more sense. The second property we want to utilize is the nth root of a over b, and b is not allowed to equal to zero here, is the same thing as saying nth root of a over the nth root of b. Okay, so we can break this down into individual roots and work with these individual roots and simplify them. And this is because since the nth root of a over b is basically going to be a over b to the 1 over n, another way of writing this, which is equal to a to the 1 over n over b to the 1 over n, which is equal to the nth root of a over the nth root of b. Okay. So we have these two big properties here. So. Now, to do this, let's do our first samples here. Okay, so now that we have the properties, let's go ahead and apply these.
Okay, so typically in these types of problem sets uh, where you're just simplifying radicals, later on you're gonna, uh, that's gonna be part of a bigger type of problem, uh, you're just gonna have the direction. So here are some examples. And the direction here is simplify if possible. And some of these can get messy. Uh, a lot of these problems, you might have one, two, three items under here, four items. You'll have a ton of fractions involved. So you just apply the basic principles and you should be all right. So let's start with number one, going back to our square root of eight. Okay, we know the approximation value is about 2.83. So to start, we got to think of um, what number what number uh, is a factor of 8 that is a perfect square? Now, let me get a better marker that is, so what number is a factor of 8 that is a perfect square? because we're dealing with a square root, right? Okay. So again, we want to first check, is eight a perfect square? No. Then we want to say, what number is a factor of eight that is a perfect square? So let's think of all our perfect square numbers. So our perfect square numbers are one, four, nine, 16, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So we would say four. And what we do, that's the only factor that is a perfect square here. Uh, usually if you have a more in-depth problem, we want to, we might have two perfect squares at work, but you always take the largest. So the next step is, just say what numbers. Um, so next step, what we want to do is break this down into factors. break down into factors of eight where one is the largest perfect square. If it exists. So you have to remember that sometimes you just can't simplify these. Okay, there's a breakdown of the thoughts in approaching these. Okay. And I'll go through, kind of squish my space here a little bit. And from experience, squished space when you're doing math or intense problems is not good. That's where we tend to make mistakes, so I should really spread out. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's say the square root of 8. And again, I'll go through this a little bit more detailed step one. This is a perfect square. No. Number two, are there factors of the radicand eight that are? And the answer is yes. That one is four. Okay, so the next step is, if so, uh, write down the root into factor pieces with the largest perfect root. We go here's better clearer steps to approach this so we know that four is a factor so what I'm going to do is rewrite this in terms of 
instead of the square root of eight, we'll say it's the square root of four times two. And by our property, we could write these as individual radicals. So this is the same thing as the square root of four times the square root of two, which is the same thing as two square roots of two. Nice, so this means two times the square root of two. So if you do that in your calculator, so if I do two times the square root of two, I get 2.83 magically. Well, it's not magic. Math is not magic. It's well thought out. Okay, wonderful. So let's move on to adding a few more things here. Let's go ahead and try this with the cube root of 54. Okay, here we go. Here's a cube root of 54. Now I'm dealing with a cube root. I have to remember my perfect cube numbers. We get really good at knowing your numbers. So again, is this a perfect cube? Well, let's think of our perfect cubes. Okay, we know one times one times one, multiplied by itself three times is one. Uh, let's look at our next number. Two times two times two is eight. That's a perfect cube, so uh, no. Let's see, three times three times three is 27. That's our next perfect cube. The next is four times four times four, which is 64. Okay, we passed it, right? 54 is much smaller than 64, so we know that 54 is not a perfect cube. So the answer is no. Next step, are there any factors of 54 that are perfect cubes? So second, factors of 54 that are perfect cubes? Well, we sort of set ourselves up to be able to uh, answer this with our previous step. So yes. And that is 27. So we can make this because 27 times 2 gives you 54. So we, what we do here is we break this down into the cube root of 27 times 2. And now we have the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And we have 3 cube roots of 2. Okay. Great. There's another one. So let me draw some more from uh, other examples here. Let's go ahead and mix in some variables and apply the rules. Three. Let's go ahead and look at something like because 25 times 2 gives you 50. So we look at the number part first, then next we want to look at the variable part and break that part down. What about x cubed? Well, x cubed works because uh, what's the perfect square inside there? Well, the way we, we have to look at our rules of exponents, the way we make x cubed is from x squared times x. So if I break this down, I want to look for the highest multiple of 2. Is a perfect square. 
So the highest multiple of 2 here would be x squared times would be a 2. So we can break this down to that highest multiple times x to the first power because by the rules of exponents, 2 plus 1 give me the exponent of 3. So x squared times x to the first will give me x cubed. So that's how we break that one down. So x squared is the root here, is the, the factor piece that I want to use from x cubed. So let's go ahead and break this down now. So I'm going to take each different base or unit and break it down into factors that are perfect squares, if they exist. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's go ahead and break down 50 into 25 times 2. Let's break down x cubed into x squared times x. And um, I have a little shortcut I do for this, but if we go strictly by the property and how it's set up, we know that this part can be taken out. The square root of 25 is just 5. And this part can be taken out. The square root of x squared comes out and becomes x. So this comes out as 5. This comes out as x. And that will leave me with a 2x underneath the square roots. So going to the next step, I'm actually just going to rewrite this using the property. And once you get a good handle on this, you could just do what I bring it out. Once you really understand the properties. So this becomes all of this based on our property. And now what we have is we have 5 uh, times square root of 2 times x times the square root of x. And what does this give me? Well, uh, the nice order we like to have here is we like to put all the pieces, the coefficients out in front, all the stuff we took out of the roots. So multiplication we know is commutative, which means we can multiply in any order we like. So if I rewrite this, this becomes 5x. So I'm going to bring all that out as a coefficient. These are both the same roots, and I can leave this part underneath. So that is our final answer here. Okay. I'm going to take more examples now from some of our worksheets as well. Uh, this one is very close to our worksheet. I just have a Y there. Now let's see if I do something like This is number 5c, so this is a cube root of 54. x cubed and y to the 4. We're going to add some other stuff here. Okay, so in this example here, I'm dealing with cubes. All right, so number one, are there, is this a perfect cube? No, okay. So what we want to do is uh, look at, is there perfect cubes? Well, the whole thing is not a perfect cube, right? The only piece is, is the x cubed. Okay, so second, the factors that are perfect cubes. Let's start with the 54. Can we break that down into perfect cube pieces? Yeah, 54, um, we know we have perfect cubes 1, 8, 27, 64, etc. But we know 27 is a factor from a previous example. So we could rewrite this as 27 times 2. Okay. Uh, the x cubed 
Is that a perfect cube? Can we break that down into perfect cube factors? Well, guess what? This is divisible by three. So this is like saying x to the third power over three, so that's perfect. Any multiple of three would make a perfect cube here. So x to the third becomes just x to the third. We'll take that whole piece out. That part's a perfect cube. What about y to the fourth? Is that a perfect cube? Well, uh, that one is not, but we have to find the highest multiple of three. And extract. <laughs> Sounds like you're taking teeth out with roots. Sometimes it feels that way. Uh, anyways, this becomes y cubed times y to the first power. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as the cube root of 27 times 2 times x cubed times, using my rules of exponents for multiplication, I'm going to say y to the third times y to the first. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just sort of skip these steps. You can write them all out as individual cube roots, but I'm going to say the cube root of this part is just 3, the cube root of this part is just x, and the cube root of this part is just going to be y. So this whole thing becomes 3 times x times y, and what's left over inside is the cube root of 2y. Let's add a little twist here. Why don't we make these th exponents a little different, some higher numbers. So let's go ahead and simplify this piece. Let's go ahead and say, well, let's take the key root of 54, but let's make this x to the lucky 13 and y to the 8. All right, so what we want to do, again, the same system. Is this a perfect root? Okay, no. Uh, two, the factors that are. Okay, let's break down the pieces here. So we're going to break this down into the key root of 27 times 2 times, okay, what about x to the 13? What's the highest uh, cube root in there? Well, we can break this down into a 12 times x to the first. So this becomes x to the 12 because 12 divided by 3 gives you a nice uh, whole number, which is 4. And then this becomes x to the first. I want to be consistent, make sure I, uh, I come up with the quantities in the previous step. And now what's the highest root perfect cube of 8? And that would be uh, 6, looks like. So we'll say y to the 6 times y squared. And you want to be really clear that all this is under the root, because a cube root is of 2, y squared is not the same as y squared, right? A cube root of y squared is y to the 2 thirds power. Okay, next step, what I'm going to do is extract all these. This comes out. As soon as it comes out of the radical symbol, you'll see its true value. This whole thing now becomes 3. This becomes 3. This becomes x to the fourth, because that's 12 divided by 3. And this becomes uh, 6 divided by 3, which is y squared. And we're left with the cube root of 2. Here's my leftovers, 2xy squared. And that's my final answer. OK, so let me take a look at a one that has some division involved. Now, okay, well, we won't quite. Do 
see those entirely, but um, I'll touch on that a little bit more later. So here's the next type of problem I want to do. challenge here. So let's say I have this problem. Okay, you could treat it as two individual problems and break them down um, and then simplify. Now if you notice that this is not an actual perfect fourth root. Um, so this, this couldn't be broken down any further. So what I would do in a case like this is apply my property in this fashion say well these are both exactly the same root and you have to make sure these numbers are exactly the same and put it all under one big fourth root symbol like this so here's our little challenge problem for today and we'll end on that note and do some more next video okay i'm going to put this all underneath one root because it applies to all of this by our properties now if you notice i have two same bases here, and I can apply my rules of exponents. So here, what I want to do is combine. There are going to be problems where you have to do a little uh, preliminary work to make it easier to work the rules so and apply the properties. So the next step here would be um, Let's go ahead and use our rules of exponents and simplify this to 64 x to the 7 minus 3 y to the third power. Okay. Well, this is going to be a lot less messy to work with because the original problem looks a little daunting. But here I can say this is going to be now the problem the 64, the fourth root is 64 x to the fourth and y cubed. Now I'm going to do all the same steps as before, break them down into roots. So here I'm going to say this is the fourth root of, uh, let's see, what are my perfect fourth roots? This might be a little more challenge. Perfect uh, fourth powers. I should say perfect fourth powers. Uh, let's see, well we know one to the fourth is one, uh, two to the fourth is two times two times two times two, so we have 4 times 4 is 16. Now 3 to the 4th is going to be a little harder on the brain. So let's see. Um, I'm going to break it down to 3 squared and 3 squared, which is easier for me to do, which is 81. So obviously that doesn't work. But dot, dot, dot. We can see that 16 is a root here. We can break this down into 16 times 4. Uh, x to the 4th is a perfect 4th root. And y to the third is just y to the third. We don't even make it to four here, so it'll be left over underneath. So by the same tokens here, we could write this as the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of four times the fourth root of x to the fourth times the fourth root of, give ourselves a little more room here, go. And now we finally get the value 2 times, so this comes out, uh, the fourth root of 4 times x times the fourth root of y cubed. And this whole thing basically breaks down to 2x to the fourth root of 4 
went ahead and extracted this four, extracted this x, I mean two x, and then you're left over with the four y cubed times eight. All right, so we'll be back and we'll do a few more. Uh, one thing that we'll see in our next part is how to problems where you might have something like the square root of 8 over the square root of 3 and looking at applying our properties there. Uh, what we'll see is that we're not going to want to leave any roots in the denominator. This last challenge problem I did just turns out that this uh, was eliminated. We were able to combine this with the numerator. We weren't left with any square roots in the denominator. So we will tackle that subject on um, at another time. So this is Miss Call signing off until next time. So hope that was helpful. Thank you.